the... The six in one in... Yeah, yeah, look, uh, I've, uh, I've had a look at uh, that particular decision from four different camera angles, and uh, my judgment is that the ball did deflect off a Canberra player, uh, which meant that six tackles should not have been awarded. Uh, the referee initially rules six again, and then uh, he's one of his touch judges and the assist referee immediately tell him that it's come off a Canberra player. Uh, he corrects his initial call, and uh, then in the space of the remaining play, he calls uh, last tackle on at least four occasions um, before the play breaks down. It's obviously very messy and uh, very disappointing for the game as a whole that uh, we're now talking about an incident where they actually got the decision right, but they got it right in a way that's created an enormous amount of controversy. Uh, so does that um, decision, the initial indication of six again, affect the way Canberra play out that tackle? Yeah, I'm sure it does. Uh, but if they had not corrected the decision and the Raiders had scored, I'd probably be, still be sitting here now telling you that a try had been scored off an incorrect decision. From the moment he waved his arm over Graham Watson, whatever happened after that was, was going to be wrong, whichever way it went. Just... Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was uh, the, the moment that happened, the outcome uh, was going to be very unpalatable. Uh, the fact that uh, he had to correct that decision, and he did correct it virtually instantly after he waved six again because the voices came over the top virtually immediately to say that it was off the Raiders player. Uh, but the fact that the whole world saw him wave six again initially, even though he, he then went, he put, uh, changed it to a fifth tackle decision or a fifth tackle signal and uh, called verbally that it was the last tackle, um, as I said, on at least four occasions, um, it doesn't uh, make it any easier for, I'm sure, um, Raiders fans and players and officials to uh, to accept. Given the Roosters Roos scored yeah, in the next play, do you think mm -hmm. that that basically decided the match? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, as I said, if, it, uh, if they had allowed play to go on off, a, off an incorrect uh, restart to the tackle count uh, and the Raiders had scored, I'd still be sitting here answering why that was allowed to happen. I think everyone would ultimately prefer that they get decisions right. Uh, but, and in this case, I do believe that the decision not to restart the tackle count was the right decision. Uh, did they do it in a way that uh, was acceptable uh, and was in a way that didn't create confusion amongst the Raiders players? No, they didn't. Um, so, uh, but the decision not to award six tackles, I believe, to be right. Well, this has been the concern all year, the refereeing decision with one major part the grand final. How do we get to this point? We took around all year and we still arrive at that. Well, the, you know, the fact is that we have human beings making decisions uh, and they make those decisions in the, uh, on the spur of the moment based on, on what they observe. Uh, one official thought he observed the ball touched by a defender and called that. And one of the reasons why we have multiple officials on the field is to try and get decisions right. Uh, the other officials on the field felt that that was an incorrect call and corrected it immediately. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not possible to avoid errors. Errors, by very definition, aren't intended to happen. Uh, so, you know, any, if anyone can sit in this chair and tell you that they can prevent errors from occurring, then, you know, we, we should be hiring them immediately. Sorry. But it just can't happen. How's been coming down sort of I haven't spoken to the referee. I mean, it's been, uh, you know, so frantic since the end of the game. I haven't actually had a chance to speak to the officials. Uh, I've been trying to access video replays and so forth to, uh, uh, to try and resolve the situation tonight rather than have it carry over till tomorrow. 
Uh, so um, I haven't actually had the opportunity to speak to the officials. Frank, is there scope for a one referee system since there was two messages? Well, if we'd had one referee tonight, we would have got the decision wrong uh, because we would have awarded six again and who knows what would have happened after that. Um, the fact is that that play and the contact with the ball from the kick did not, in my view, warrant the awarding of six more tackles. If we'd had one referee on the field, the referee who called the, called the play immediately, uh, six again would have stood, and who knows what would have happened. But that would have been an incorrect decision as well. Uh, I did make an offer to speak to Ricky Stewart, and he declined that offer. He, uh, Ricky said that in his press conference. Um, I did uh, tell him I was happy to have a private conversation with him if he'd like to do that. Obviously, it's a very difficult time for uh, the players and the coaches, so I understand his decision not to have that conversation. The game's over. Uh, but um, I did make that offer. He said that his first thing was he went off the field to go and congratulate the officials. Mm -hmm. Probably bigger things Yeah, look, you know, Ricky's a tremendous coach. He's a tremendous human being um, and I would have expected nothing other than that um, you know he's obviously gutted by the outcome um, uh, he's a, you know I've, I've known Ricky for many many years I've been on the field with him and um, uh, he's a great competitor and he would have loved nothing better than to to win the grand final tonight so for him to go onto the field and to um, to make that gesture to the match officials, I think speaks volume about his character. Um, does it in any way lessen the impact on Ricky and the Raiders? Uh, no, it doesn't. Uh, the, the game is, unfortunately, um, a very controversial conclusion to what's been an out, uh, outstanding season. But I still come back to the point that the on-field decision was ultimately correct. Uh, but I accept that, that that created confusion amongst the Canberra, Canberra players. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we're not going to avoid contentious decisions and uh, that's the very nature of our game. Some of these things do divide opinion. Uh, I've made that point on countless occasions throughout the course of the season. Uh, I only had the opportunity to watch that one on the big screen. I haven't been back to look at... Uh, other camera angles of that incident, but from what I did see on the uh, on the video screen at the ground, um, you know I was uh, okay with that decision. I understand that it that it will be that it will be contentious, uh, but I thought that the uh, the early contact, uh, the momentarily early contact, uh, did not really give an opportunity for that ball to be taken cleanly. It was uh, it was potentially a try scoring situation. And I'm okay with that. I'm, I also accept that people will disagree with that, uh, but uh, I thought that was okay. In the um, play where the ball hit the Roosters' trainer, mm -hmm. I know it's a correct application of the rule. Yes. But in hindsight, of that we look to review that rule. It's fair. Well, that's an international law of the game. Uh, you know, that's not an NRL interpretation or a, a local NRL rule. That's an international law of the game. Always has been, to the best of my knowledge, uh, for probably as long as the game's been played, uh, certainly during my involvement in the game. And, uh, you know, it's called a mutual infringement and it, it's catered for in the international laws of the game if the ball hits a referee, a touch judge, or even if a spectator finds their way onto the field and you have unusual circumstances where... Uh, someone who is not normally uh, in the play becomes involved in the play uh, and it, it's a, as a mutual infringement it dictates that the attacking team gets the loose head and the feed and the attacking team uh, is the team with the greatest territorial advantage so whoever has the most territory is, is, is classified as the attacking team the attacking team and they receive both of those uh, benefits of the feed and uh, the loose head so uh, it's an international law of the game um, is it fair in some circumstances the way it plays out? Well, you know, you could probably argue that it's not, but it is a rule that caters for very, very unusual circumstances. Just while you're going, will you, will you try and still speak to the in the next 40, 20, 40, 40 hours once they hit the 
Well, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm obviously happy to talk to uh, Ricky or anyone from the Raiders at any time. Uh, I know they're, you know, very disappointed at the moment, and uh, you know they they will want to regroup and uh, uh, and get over what's happened tonight uh, in terms of the loss. Um, but um, I'm obviously happy to talk to them at any time that they are prepared to talk. Thank you. Thanks, Brian.